Hey guys, Daniel James here, and today what we're going to be doing is taking a look at Audio Imperia and Performance Samples' new collaboration library, Chorus, which is their new huge sounding choir library. The way we're going to do this is an overview. So what I've done is I've written a track in the background. It's a cover of one of my favorite video game themes from Battlefield. What we're going to do is take a listen to the track first. We may not listen to it all because it's like three minutes long, but the track is on YouTube already if you want to go listen to the full thing. And then what we'll do is we'll break down uh, how I used Chorus in it, uh, how, how I used it against other instruments, but then also we'll go into the actual library and look at some of the features that are in it and stuff like that. But without further ado, let's jump in and take a look at the track. So I've got it prepared here. Hopefully we can just load it up. Well, that didn't go to plan. Now we've got a beach ball. Good start, Dan, good start. <laughs> All right, let's, let's go, here we go. Okay, so we'll, we'll leave the track there. It does go on a little bit longer, <clears throat> but like I say, the full version is up on the YouTube already. So as you could hear, I tried to use it in multiple different ways because one of the cool things about Chorus, let's just load it up here. One of the cool things about Chorus and one of the main things that actually drew me to it is it has multiple different lengths of uh, syllable. And so for the longest time, you, you had to choose between two different types of choir, right? You you either had to choose the big, loud Requiem style. Oh, 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 oh. You had to choose that one, like the trailer sound, or you had to pick the like somber, slow, relaxed uh, versions of something like a, a James Horner or something like that. A bit more sort of reserved, a bit slower or more like, you know, like Crimson Tide, you know, where the, where the choir isn't going big and loud. And bold, it's just sort of there. But the difference is, before today, when you wanted to do the slower type of music or the 
softer type, you had to do it with oohs and ahs, usually. That's the only way you could do it because the syllables of the other ones, usually something along these lines. You know, and you try and go soft. Right? Which sounds great, but if you're trying to be slow. Right, or whatever. But now they've introduced this new one called the slow syllables. Here I'm actually using a, uh, a multi. Uh, I'm using, I actually set it up over here. Uh, for those who, who are wondering, I did get an advanced copy of this. So I'm using the version that's like, uh, that isn't on the uh, add tab. I need to add it to the tab. So if you're wondering why I'm going to the quick load, that's why. Because they gave me one so I could prepare this track ready for you guys. But anyway, so the slow syllables, like I mentioned, are more like this. Got more than one thing highlighted there, I can see. Yeah, so I just want this one. Right, so you can immediately hear out the box insane tone. Let me turn off all my reverbs and everything. Just so you get, this is the clean, clean tone. Absolutely incredible. Like the second I, I loaded this up, I knew that I had my choir library for the next few years. Because listen to it soft as well. So that's it, just purely dry. I have, I am running it through uh, Ultiverb. That's the difference. Not much. There's not much difference at all. And a little bit of soothe. Just to take some of the harder edges off. That's all the mixing that's going in. Uh, can you slow them down? I don't believe so. Release. So you can transpose, you can pedal, uh, transpose. No, so it doesn't look like you can. So the release, uh, the release thing here is interesting. So this is velocity sensitive. So if I hit it hard, you get the s s at the end of the thing. But if I play soft, They, they reduce the amount of s that you get at the end of the sound. So if you play particularly soft, you're not going to get any of that uh, sibilant S sound that comes through. But when you're playing loud, sometimes that sibilant S is enough to make you, as a listener, hear the choir more. It makes it more apparent. So let me just uh, play a few more little things with these. So what I like to do with these in general is usually what I'll do is I'll pull up like a good string patch. We'll just play around with this a little bit so you can get the idea. The other cool thing while that's loading, uh, while the strings are loaded, if I got like just a general legato patch, I don't, which is good in like, because it means I wasn't lazy, but it's bad in terms of examples. 
right? So I'll just put this on consort, turn it down a little bit, number 11, number one, number 11. So what I'll normally do is, oh, there isn't a number 11. So I'll get me choir, I'll get me strings. And here's the other interesting thing. This caught me out because I'm not sure how I feel about it. So it could go either way. But basically, they've made it, I think it's only on the long ones. So if I do this, right, if I hold the, the, the note, and then when I push the sustain pedal, if you listen, it triggers the next note. That means that I can hold a chord and cycle through the syllables without having to re-trigger the note. So if I'm just playing a note and hit the sustain pedal, Oh God, she's that high. love this thing so much like if you play down down low you start getting into that sort of old media ventures vibe like really low though Like it's got that deep sort of crimson tidy vibe. So what I did uh, in this track, obviously I'm just doing like a, because I sort of wanted to do it as a requiem, like it, it became unfortunately prophetic. Like I say, because I wrote this track ori originally, you know, the requiem was for the, the, you know, the death of the battlefield theme, but given recent events, the requiem is for completely different reasons now and very unfortunate and real ones. You know, we live in fucking 2022. There's no excuse for wars <laughs> but anyway, again, we're not going down that road. But anyway, so this is this is a, a war requiem. So I wanted it to be like a soulful mourning of, uh, you know, the 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 battle lost kind of, you know. So I just solo it. So something to, uh, worth mentioning here is you can see that here. So the way that this triggers is it triggers per note, right? So if I play a chord and then change a, a note within it, it won't change the syllable, right? It'll just do the same one. So 
you can use that to your advantage. Usually when I'm doing it, like if, if like I am here, duh, 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 duh. Like when I'm doing that, I want that duh, duh, duh to be accented. So the best way to do that, this is more of a tip, uh, have the whole chord hit that so that it re-triggers the thing because otherwise you end up, I'll show you an example, but. Right, but if if like, for example, this was sustained, you wouldn't hear the duh, duh, duh as, as easily. Okay, maybe you will. <laughs> Usually it doesn't do that. I guess today it will do that. Uh, but in my experience so far, I, I'm not sure the rules. If Jan is in the chat room, he can tell me. But the way it, I understand it is that if you don't, because it doesn't do it here. If you listen, this note stays on the same syllable as everything else. But it allows you to be like, the way I use it here, for example, is the inner line is descending, but I don't want that descending voice to be saying new words as he goes down. So it's like if you requiem, you want it to be the eh syllable that goes down. You don't want it to be requiem, requiem. <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't want them to start saying it again. So what I do is you, you'll see it. Whenever I want to accent the actual top line melody, I have the chords underneath follow the rhythm like here they're not changing notes they're just changing rhythm so that they because that's what the choir would do they would still sing in some degree of unison even if some of them change notes right it's hovering around the mid dynamics a bit louder here Right, I just want to do an example. So if I now take these, for example, and turn them loud, remember what I was mentioning earlier about the S's? So you should hear more sibilant S's on this now. You hear how it got, it got a bit more sloshy. Now that doesn't work when it's going short here, but you can see I do it on the longer ones in certain places because sometimes having that makes it feel a little bit more human. So you can hear, like I have it on the top line here. Oh, my whole computer's frozen. There we go, we're back. <laughs> my computer just froze. There's a good chance, by the way, that the stream will just cut out. If it does, stick around. We'll just carry on from where we were. From what I understand, I think it's the auto save. And also, if I remember correctly, every now and again, we do get like some sort of Twitch resistance. If anything like that happens, this will just be two videos on YouTube and on Twitch. Stick around. Anyway, so we were here. So dominant seventh, key change. Here's a little pro tip for you <clears throat> while, while we're on the subject. If you have a major key, get the keyboard under your hands now. <clears throat> Here's a little tip. If you have a major key, <clears throat> If you hit a dominant seventh, you have some very easy options then, right? So from that dominant seventh, so if we're doing C, the dominant seventh is a D sharp there. Yeah, sorry, if we're doing an F, uh, an F major, right? If we put that, can we can we bring up the little keyboard just so you could show? I do that a lot in this track. This is turning into a bit of both things. If you look at the keyboard down at the bottom, so you see the C chord, but fucking hell, F chord. Right, if I put the dominant seventh, which in this case is this note here, right? My dog loves it. Right, and so if you've got your dominant seventh, if you move that down one semitone, that's going to be the major third of the next, next, uh, next chord. So if I've got my F, this wants to go down to here. That will always resolve that way. So remember that if you're on a, no matter the key, you're on a major, major chord, hit that dominant seventh, move that seventh down one semitone, that will be the major third of the next, oh, <laughs> of the next note, which in this case would be that. But you do that. You hear how that just keeps going round? Mm. 
right? So you can just keep going around like that. Or alternatively, you go to the minor. So if we're on an F major with that, with that D sharp in there, right? Then you go down two semitones and that is the, uh, the minor third, right? So that, that, that note up there, the, uh, the D sharp, you just move that down two semitones and that's going to be the minor third. Then we make this major again, but with the... And then minor third again. Make it major, add the seventh. And then minor again. Uh, which would be... And then... Fuck you. You get the idea. So it's a good way to go through the circle of fifths. Obviously, that's the way music's supposed to work. Uh, and like the thing I've always found about music theory is I, I am ADD as fuck. So I can't learn just by someone explaining something like that to me. I have to get it under my hands. And when I, that's why I always work in D minor, by the way. That's why I always work in the key of D. If I transpose any musical technique into D, I understand D minor so well in my muscle memory that then it becomes part of my logical memory as well. So in order to learn things, I get it into my muscle memory and it helps me understand the logic of it. Sorry, just a quick, just a quick little tip for you there because I'm doing it a lot in this track. Anyway, so then the track moves over to this part where we've got the ostinato. So here we start doubling it with... Uh, So here I only chose the men. This is another cool thing. It's split up into men and women uh, because sexism. No, I'm joking. It's, it's split up into men and women, which is great for us because having the control over, like in the track I showed earlier, men's voices like don't sound amazingly great when they get high and women's don't sound amazingly great when they get low or too high. Well, it's the same. Everything has a perfect range, right? But what you'll tend to find with most libraries that stack them together is that they don't reduce uh, the men doing this. Which, which is, uh, and, and you do do it. Like if I quickly play, this is a piece of music uh, that I wrote recently that has, in fact, I think it's actually the exact same choir. I believe this is recorded in Budapest. But at the end of this track here, if I just quickly play this to you, uh, you, you, you can get men to sing that high. So you heard that, that was, that was live. They can go that high. Obviously they recorded. So my note in that song went higher than this library goes. But I think it was a high E, Jesus. But like for men, that's a very high thing. And so usually when you record them this way, uh, they are, when you record them as an ensemble, when the men sing high, it sort of ruins this, this range of, of, the, of the choir, which is, decent for the women but it doesn't sound great for the men so it doesn't create a nice balance so being able to separate the men and women mean that you can have the men down low and the women up high and sort of avoid that range where they clash so much but anyway so this is the traditional syllable so these are sharp because they don't even go that high. But like in order to play that, I'd have to have, I'd have to keep it held down. Like. Do these ones work with the sustain? Yeah. That doesn't work too well when I'm playing. There's like... A, Again, sorry, there's a delay when I play here. So like an easier one would be like. It's insane how much like 20 milliseconds will throw you off, but you get the gist. So it's a sharper kind of attack, right?
Right, so we're playing, we're just playing the, the melody here. We're just, uh, the rhythm, the ostinato. Nice and quiet. And as you can see on this one, I, like the S was a bit much for me. So I actually like, and I love that they allow you to do this. So on the men's one here, I actually turned this down. I turned it so that if I wanted the S, I'd have to go really, really, really loud. Uh, sorry, really low. <laughs> if I wanted the S, I'd have to play the MIDI note really hard in order to get it. So it, I have to set this low down here so that it, it only hits the S. You see this? So the non-S is MIDI from nothing to 110, which I believe is everything here. Whereas if it was the other way around, and if these were all 127, it would be a bit more S-y. Right? <laughs> And it's it's not bad, but like what you'd want to do is only really have it in places where it wouldn't mess up something else. So like if I put it at the end of these, it would be. So you hear how this becomes kiss, I guess is the word it sounds like it's saying. This is ki, and then this becomes kiss. So it allows you to add that S on sort of to words that you want it on. Sounds like it said rat piss, but like that's that's not what it says, I promise. Right, we turn this up, see how it sounds when it mixes in. So that became wustis, which isn't bad. Like it may actually work to carry it over. Because then it becomes less of a bump bum, it becomes rastish. So let's try that. Let's try doing that on all of these and see how it feels different. It's a good way to actually compare. So now we got. I think that actually sounds better. What do you think? So this is the original. Because that becomes da 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 da, or da 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 da. Slightly different, but it feels different. Well, what sounds better in the track? You see the difference? As opposed to rusty. But the, the thing I'm trying to point out there is usually that decision is made for you. Normally, the syllables that you choose will either have an S or they don't. So you're sort of stuck with that syllable if, and if you don't want it, you can't have the syllable, right? Any syllable that has that sibilant S in. Because they've thought that through, which again, is the reason I'm loving Audio Imperium performance samples so much these days, compared to certain other developers, is because they're thinking about these composer-centric features, which, which don't sound that important, but they're things that we have to do in order to not sound shit. Because if you deliver, if I was to deliver a track and it was like this, like even, even though the choir sounds fine, Right, the choir would think that that line is shit, right? They would assume that this is bad. Because even though this is a demo mock-up, like, you know, like for when you're recording live and things, even if this is a demo mock-up, they will hear that, but because the mock-up sounds bad, they will assume that the part you wrote is bad, right? Because this by itself sounds awful. And if I was constricted by the... Uh, by the samples that were provided and I, there was nothing I could do. That's just what I would have to do. And I would have to explain, look, I know the samples are a little bit S-y there. There is a bit, but if we can just overlook that and try and imagine what it's going to be, a lot of the time they struggle with that. Whereas having the option to choose that and just be like, you know what? I want it to all be pretty staccato. So I want none of that sustained S. Then they understand the part. So I know that it seems insignificant and obviously it's never going to be that extreme, but it's easier to show the point I'm making by using the extreme. So now if you just roll that extreme where all of them are S's and you take it where every now and again, one of them is an S, but in the wrong place. So let's just do that. Let's just put like some random S sounds in. 
like old libraries would do. Because old libraries, you wouldn't really know. And if you couldn't control what the actual words were saying, like in some of the um, orchestral tools ones, you can't change the syllables, even though there are ones. I wish they would let you do that. There's, you know, like that's why this is good. When you can't edit it, if there is a sibilant S in there, there's not much you can do about it. And so if, if I play it now, you'll hear that S pop in when it's not really, when it's not really noticeable, right? But well, it's not really meant to be there, and it will, it should be distracting. We'll hear. Like here was the worst one. So like if it was this first note, it's because like when it's really sharp next to each other. So listen how this just ruins this rhythm. You see, like it sort of destroys where all of the uh, rhythmic parts are. So again, I just wanted to show the significance of that because it is a new thing. By the way, I did mention here, so on the, on the top one here, we had the slow syllables. You can turn off that pedal functionality where you change the... So on this one at the bottom, I imagine it's set to off. If I can... Okay, we've got a beach ball. That happens when my Cubase auto saves, by the way. Thank you, George Hammond. Uh, so the, oh, this one doesn't have the pedal. This one only has the uh, transport. So you can't do it on the, I thought you could do it on the bigger ones, but you can't. I, I, be cool if you could. I guess that's a whole load of programming though. So it's only on the slow syllables. You have this advanced syllables by pedal. That, whereas with the long syllables, it's more traditional. So if you are someone who holds a sustain pedal with their chords, you can. Like the the reason I would do that is when I'm doing these, you know, when I when you're playing with the uh, when you're playing with the strings as well, you obviously want your strings to uh, sustain when you hold the pedal. Which means if I was doing like a theme uh, with with it, I would want them. Why are the strings so quiet? But like these, <clears throat> these play relatively well quiet, but you can tell that they're still singing loud, right? So even at lowest dynamics. Play here. So, 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 it's actually something I'm going to be able to like. It's difficult to do here because the, usually what I would do in these walkthroughs is I would set up two tracks and then sort of play them against each other. But because this track is so full, you can see that my uh, my CPU limit is almost at the top here. It's also introduced like a delay, so it's very difficult for me to play things together. So I'm playing very slow and methodical, not because the library can't handle it. It's just, I don't know if you can tell how <laughs> significant that is, but. Anyway, that was the men's choir. So then on track two, I think I just have the women's choir, right? But the women are on energetic syllables. And these are like the traditional ones, except these ones are... are. In fact, I'm going to turn this all the way down as well. Yeah, I can't, I can't play anything properly because it's so delayed. Is that the reverb that's doing that? I think it's the reverb that's doing it, but. And the thing you'll notice, okay, so I'm just going to switch between the energetic sy syllables. So I'm just going to play. Right, and then if I play the same on slow. So you can definitely hear the difference between the tone of the two. 
And that's something else which is worth mentioning is when you record, it's think of it like a drum. When you record a choir uh, quietly and soft, you get more of that body vibration and then you turn it up, right? So if you hit a drum soft and turn it up, you get a lot more bass and low end. You get a lot more of that body to it, right? That's the general vibe of what happens when things are done quietly. Like there's not a lot of energy. It's more of a rumble. It's a slow moving air, right? That's how it works. It's a slow moving energy. So it's warmer, right? Right, and the women. Right? And now if we listen to the energetic syllables, you can hear the mix is considerably different. And that is actually very important. So in a mix, this this sounds beautiful in isolation. The low, the low, soft syllables are what you want to use when they are primarily the focus or the body of the music, right? When everything is sort of based around the vocal, you use soft syllables because you get that warmth, you get that body. But when you're going big and loud like this, right? So if I was to take, if I was to take this part and put it on the slow bit, Right, so it's only, now the slow ones are playing the rhythm. They almost sound nervous. Right, and that's the, that's the point I'm trying to make, is before today, you had to choose one or the other. You had to choose a library that did the big sound or you had to choose a library that did the small sound. The small could do the big, but not very well. The big could do the small, but not very well, right? Because big ones have to be mixed harsh and high in order to poke through when everything's loud. And the, uh, and the slow, soft ones have to be big and warm and slow on the attack in order to work when things are more chill. And so what I've usually been doing is usually I use Oceana, which means that what I'm trying to do is the opposite of what I just did there. I'm trying to do this. So instead of, uh, like at the beginning would be this. Right, which is obviously too loud. That was, uh, and then if we put it on the energetic syllables, which is the, this one, it'd be even worse. Actually, that's not too bad. It's because it's too low. Right, let me put it with the track. I'll try and turn it down so that what I would usually do, it would usually be like this. Right, where's the rest of the track? which works, but it's sort of not the right vibe. It's a bit too sort of, we're, we're looking out over a, like a, an apocalyptic cityscape from the future. You know what I mean? It's got more of a sci-fi, like we're trying to do something big and grandiose. And if they were together, you, you get my point. So it used to be that I would avoid writing parts like that because I didn't really have a library that sold it. So now I do. So you see how that feels like it's intended as part of the music. That is significant to me. And that is genuinely like the 100% the reason why this is now my 100% go-to choir library for everything because it covers both aspects, but they're recorded in the same room. So they sound consistent with each other. So even though the mixes were different, you know, oh, 
they sound the same, if that makes sense, they sound like the same instrument as opposed to do two different choirs for two different purposes. And consistency is very important when you're trying to sell a track in this manner. So if we listen now to the harder parts here, it's going to be loud, so prepare yourself. So here you'll hear I'm not too particular about the words that have been said. Now, there is something I do wish uh, because I have the men and the, the women separate here. And there is uh, going to be a problem anytime you do this, where if at any point they play it at different times, you end up with them singing different syllables, right? <laughs> These are actually in time. You know? They actually have different syllables set up. I could probably change them to be the same. They look like they're going in the same place, actually. Oh, no, I fucked something up. Oh, well, you get the point. But anyway, here I'm not too particular because... So what I'm doing here, and this is how I normally use choir libraries, but it's not always great if you're going to do it live. So don't always take this. But usually what I do is I treat choir when it's big like this as a sound more than an instrument. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but it's like... I'm focusing more on how it sounds rather than what they're doing. So it fills it out. So if you hear in isolation, it sounds like they're singing nonsense or even clashing. But during this section of the song, it's so chaotic and it's so messy that it actually adds to that vibe. So I, I didn't mean, you know, I didn't want to change it. But in isolation, it sounds like this. It's just beach balling because it's auto save and I need to turn that off. But here we go. <laughs> Like this bit here, this bit here doesn't even sound good, but in the track, it it's bizarre. Uh, it's, it's, I guess it's a psychoacoustic thing because what I wanted the choir to do was big O, it was to do like a really fast, which doesn't really ever work in choral parts, but because the library has the energetic syllables, it's much better at doing them pretty sharp, right? So even though it doesn't sound great, when I put it in the track, you hear what I'm trying to do and your brain fills it in because I'm like hitting the, at least to me it did. So you've, you're feeling this, even though in isolation you'll hear it doesn't sound right. Let, listen to it in isolation, it sounds a bit weird. And then in the track, you'll see that it doesn't always have to sound great in isolation to work. I'll just solo that one by itself. Now, I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody expects that to sound good. I, 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 if there was a staccato version where it was intentionally really short, like that's something I want next. And like maybe if I can convince uh, Audio Imperia, if this library does well, can we have the spicatissimo? Is spicatissimo a word? <laughs> like the shortest syllable where they're literally just going tuck, 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 so that you can do lines like, the the one that came to mind is the uh, like when I sang it right then was the uh, not Da Vinci Code the one that came afterwards the the one that came after the Da Vinci Code where it was like all uh, what what was it angels and demons you know like they have something like that in I think it's 160 BPM is the name of the track something similar like that where it's very short syllables would be good so you could hear like it doesn't quite convincingly get the super short. <laughs> And like, I always make sure to try and push things as far as they go. But the thing I did realize is that there is enough audio content coming out of this. So if you listen, there's enough of these coming through. Because you're hearing the, right? You're hearing the actual note, even though it doesn't work in isolation, in, in context. If we can unsolo, we listen to that in context. So the music sort of implies that da 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 ba 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 ba. So now if we do that section without the choir, you'll hear what it's adding. 
Now, let me just mute these. So without, in fact, let me mute the whole th choir thing. So I'll play it and then I'll just mute the choir halfway through. F listen how much drops out. <laughs> Spicatissimo is a new word. So is uh, legata, legatis, legatissimo. Legatissimo. There we go. There's another one. That's that's a, a leg, legatissimo is when you have a legato that you can also play as a like a short. And when you play it short, it's short, but then it will also do legato. Leg, legatissimo. That you'd have to pronounce it legatissimo, not legatissimo. I mean, you could pronounce it legatissimo, but legatissimo. Legatissimo is how it's done. Anyway, so then we have... Uh, here we have uh, a double thing. So we have one of them doing the rhythm and then the other one doing uh, the actual melody. So that is that is one of the things you want to be using the energetic for is to is to layer against things. So if you can hear, I'm I'm layering the main melody there with that choir and So you can hear it's amazing for doubling uh, main melodies. So that's something that's always significant to remember, particularly those of you who are quite new to composing. A lot of composition isn't as, not, it's not so much complicated in terms of like, you'll look at my page here and it looks like there's lots going on. A lot of things are, are doing what's called doubling or layering, right? So what you do is, I have my main melody here, right? If I, if I turn off the choir for a second, I have my main melody playing. In fact, I'm playing it on the horn. So I'm playing it on, on the horn here, I think. Right? Usually quite undefined when you're playing it with other things. So what you do is you layer or you double, you change sort of the timbre, the, the way something feels by adding another layer to it. Choir is a perfect perfect uh, layering instrument for main melodies in epic things because that voice will cut through and it makes you feel the emotion. So if I play the same thing again, but with the, the choir on top, you feel that you feel the melody is a real melody all of a sudden because you've layered it, right? And notice that the choir is able to compete with a full brass section. That also is good. There are some libraries which don't have that extra energy. The same way that we, like, I always berate people like Spitfire in their brass because it, even though the players are playing an FF according to them, to us, it sounds like an MF because they're not going that extra little distance, that little bit of special vava, vava voom or whatever, <laughs> that little je ne sais quoi, that little thing, that little extra that pushes it to the real to the real sort of uh level that it needs to be at and that's what this does that's what that's what this is doing and again it's not doing it here there's none of that high end processing pushing it to the next level Uh, and so it, it does those two things. So let's just have a quick look at the interface. And then at the end, of course, you know, I, I finish off with another. Uh... So here I'm just using it as chords. And I absolutely love it for doing stuff like this as well. So here's another good thing it's, it's for. Just padding something out. And by padding out, I don't mean being lazy. 
what I mean is these slow syllables are so full sounding that you can in play. Because what I used to do is like if I wanted to fill it out, I would just have like a brass chord or a uh, string chord, something that sort of filled out the harmony so that I could more just play with the melody like a soloist, right? Like just a backing track. And then we're more focusing on what the main melodies are doing. Because if you hear in this part, we're doing sort of a uh, strings and cello sort of playing off each other vibe. I'll just fast forward a bit. So we're doing all... Well, let me, let me just play you this bit without the choir so you can feel what it does. So uh, it's just doing a... I'll turn off the fast bits. If I turn the choir on. So you see, it's very good at padding things out. I, I love to do that. Like that's one of the ways that I work. I, I know a lot of people don't like it. They say it's lazy or whatever, but like I love to have like just some chords and a pad. Usually with the, like I would run this as a section by itself. probably split those up it looks like it's going to save again thanks thank you mr beach ball but that's one of the ways that i like to compose and this is great for it so like a good way to start a composition and the way i have been doing particularly ones that are choral focused there is no piano there is what i'll do is i'll pull up a piano and then just jam along with the choir in the background uh the other thing i like to do is is i'll bring it up here and then uh, I, I usually do like these little jams as well. So by the way, this is something that I'll be showing you when we get uh, to Cubase 12 is they've added uh, MIDI MIDI like controller things finally. So when, when I plug in my Korg Nano control into Cubase 12 now, all of the buttons and faders suddenly work like they were supposed to. I've been using the Korg Nano control for like 10 years and it's never worked the way it's supposed to. But there is a flaw, like you can't change the faders to MIDI CC yet, but we'll talk about that. So, uh, but the other thing you can do is I have a track up and down button. So you'll often see me do this with my keyboard. So what I'll do is I'll, uh, with, with first off, I wanna just change this. So that I turn that pedal off. so that it works with sustain pedal now. Yeah, so I need to turn it off on both of them. Pedal functionality, advance. That's set, but oh fuck, I hit the wrong one. Oh fuck, I hit the wrong one again, whatever. So now that I've got the sustain pedal on, I can do like this shit. Or not. Oh, I can't, it turns it down. That's interesting. Watch this, when I change it, it immediately pitches down. Jan, what's happening? It's interesting, it resets the, I wonder if that's because of where the MIDI data is. Let me change it to somewhere where there's no MIDI data. It is interesting, okay. Okay, so it's gonna keep doing that. Sorry, the Cubase doing Cubasey things. One second. Let me just fix this. Let's be six decibels. We'll make it like normal, whatever. We'll bring it over here. I'm trying to I'm trying to set it up so that we can jam. There we go. 
or not. No, we're not going to be able to, I don't think. Yeah, because it's fucking up for weird reasons. Yeah, whenever, like, because whenever I take my... Because normally what I do is I sustain like this, hold the sustain pedal and move channel. But what it's doing is it's it's not holding the sustain when I move it. Now it is, now that I've complained. Because I can't. Like whenever I change it with the key. Okay, I can't do that today. It's so difficult to do it in these things. Okay, so we showed that. We showed that. Let's just show what's on the UI for now. Let's bring this back down to where it was supposed to be. Norm, what I was trying to do there, by the way, if you're watching this on YouTube and you're like, what the fuck was that about? Normally what we do is we we jam along with things. For some reason, it's not working properly. It keeps, but like I'll, I'll you know, usually just hold something like a chord on a, on a patch. And then once it's, uh, once it's done, we will move on, but it doesn't seem to be working today. It's working down here. Okay. So we pull up this again. What we're doing, we're taking a look at chorus right now. So as you can see on the front panel, uh, we have our syllable builder here. You can change them out. So when you're on basic, you just have, uh, the far to me, whatever. And that's how you, uh, choose where where the starting syllable is. So like if I want them both to start on two. And you can have them be different. And to do that, so you come to advanced, nice and easy. Like you add them with the top one and you delete them with the bottom. So if I wanted to create a brand new one, I would just delete all these and then go fa mi tu so ra ke de se se la tu mo ke. Right, so nice and easy there. So like, I won't go too hard into the UI because most of you know it. So you have your dynamics, that's just your, your dynamics. That's this thing. Dynamic range. So here's interesting. So low dynamic range. Well, we'll put it higher, uh, low on both. With high dynamic range, let's see. It just means it takes much longer for it to get loud. So here's here's the swell. With low dynamic range and the swell with high dynamic range. So high dynamic range is probably better or somewhere in the middle because then that allows you to be really soft. Expression is obviously just the, the volume, essentially. I know it's different from volume, but it, it works like volume. Uh, and sample starts. So this is very important. So this, this dial here, this one's set further back than most libraries normally are. It's 250 back by default. And as you can see, so what that means, and I'll just explain this because I get messages usually when I say this and people don't know what it means. A sample start type. So when MIDI happens, right, this note triggers. 
but it might not, it might be, right? Think of it like this, that this note, when it starts, because the person has to go far, let's say the R is the word we want to focus on, R, right? The F would take time to get to the R. So this note, the actual R sound might not start till like here on the sound, right? Which means if I'm playing this, it'll always sound like it's behind the beat. So what they do is they, they uh, adjust the start time of every syllable so that it's the actual note starts in the same place. And then what you do is you set your delay offset. So that's this number here in uh, Cubase. What's it actually numbered as? Track delay in milliseconds. And what you do is you set that minus to whatever, the however far off the note is. It doesn't always tell you. And I always give companies shit when they don't do it because you just have to guess otherwise. But here they put it for you. So here you can see it's 250 back, minus 250. That just means when you set this at minus 250, Right, you hear that's on the beat? Right, if I turn that off, if I if I do nothing, so if you've never changed track offset, that line in your DAW would sound like this. See how far behind the beat that is? So if I put that minus 250, And so what you do then is, uh, then when you put the delay offset, everything is in the right place. This is usually something that's very popular or something that's very, that you see a lot in legato libraries, uh, choir libraries. You sometimes now see it in drum libraries, which is cool. So you get a little bit of that initial attack, but something very important. We also have different um, mic positions on this one. So we'll just change some of those over. So right now we're on the S, which I think is the, let's just have a look. So this is the M. <laughs> oh, here, here is something. So while we're talking about it as it loads in, this is a very heavy library. If I remember correctly, it's something like, I think 70-ish gigabytes. Is that right, Jan, if you're still there? 70-ish gigabytes. And so... The problem I have with that is a lot of my SSDs are already clogged up. So this, when, I, when I've got it, and I think this version of it actually is still running off it, is running off my normal hard drives. I have moved it over to SSD, but I copied the files because I knew that it might fuck this one up. So I think this one's still running off the old, uh, off my spinny drive, right? So because it's sev like so heavy, yeah, 69 gigabytes, nice. Because it's so big, you, you do end up having, like if you're running it off a regular hard drive like this one is, you do have to wait quite a while for it to load. And that's not like it's contact, so I can play. It just means you're going to get more dropping notes while it's loading in. And it also means that it has to load through that load time for every patch of it that you have in. So if you have a big project, let's say you've finished a track, you're getting ready to render. This literally happened to me. You're waiting for it to uh, about to render and it crashes, right? So you have to reopen it. And all I want to do is reopen it and render it out. But I have to wait for everything to load back in again. So when you have bigger libraries, they take a bit longer to load in. And also something I've noticed, this only tends to happen when I have the Spitfire player loaded. So I'm not going to go too far into it. But it seems to be if I'm running a heavy contact library and the Spitfire player off a same normal hard drive. It's like they fight for bandwidth sometimes. So you get drop notes, but it's either from the Spitfire one or from the contact on the same drive. Something weird happens between the two. Uh, you guys can let me know if that ever happens for you. But anyway, so this is the S mix and I have to do it for both of them. So let's just listen to it on this one first. Right, now let's change them over to the M. And this one's loading in first, so we'll go with this one. Although I, ha I do notice that these pre-made pre mixes here, uh, Jan can probably tell me what the, what does the C, M, and S stand for? I imagine like close, mid, and stereo or something like that, but it doesn't say directly but the problem is is because it takes so long for them to load in it's very difficult for me to compare 
But here, here's the point I was making, you see, because I needed to change this on both of them. This one's still loading while uh, the other one isn't. So if I play, you're going to get that kind of dropping in and out. Classic and modern. Thank you. Classic, modern, and what? What's the S? Special. Okay, so we have we have the classical mix, which is these. Fuck, I should have just let that run on the mid. So then this is the modern mix. Right, let's try switch into the classical one and just go in with the drop notes. <laughs> That's what a library loading in sounds like. Yeah, it's impossible for me to show the differences. So I'll let them, I'll leave them on classical and let them load in. Uh, so then we, uh, on advanced, so then of course you have your mic positions. You can set these up yourself. I never do this. Uh, I never, uh, ever, I never, ever do this. I, I'm, what I tend to do is I pick the sound of the library I like the most. So when it's in isolation, I pick the sound of that that sounds the best. Then I mix it into the track any other way. Then I will EQ it and compress it that way. I tend not to use them, but for those who do, you do have the option and you do have pan. So like if I'm doing my thing here, I can mix like my men off to the left. Oh, my, my women, right? Uh, to the left and men to the right. So you get more of a spread. As you can tell, like because it's still loading in. Oh, this top one is loaded in. <laughs> the, the, are they battery safe? They are. It's just for some reason they, they take a minute to get loaded into the actual... Because uh, battery save doesn't stop this load time. It stops that initial load time. That You know when you load a new patch and it's like finds the samples? That's what battery save gets rid of. But these load times are just what they are. That's how quick it's streaming off your drive. So now they're both there. Except I've set them both in weird places. So I'm going to put this to basic, change them both to far. <laughs> they go pretty loud too, but I'm always playing these soft. I'm actually playing the loud ones too now. And I don't know how to put it across, but it has that tone, you know, like it, it, it's something hard to describe, but it's like when people sing together, it sounds different usually than when people sing in sample libraries. And it tends to be when they like Dominus Choir does this well as well. And I pointed it out then. It's like when you clash. 
That's usually when it doesn't work quite so well. Like on the harder libraries. Like you don't hear as much of the clash. But when you've got it soft, you hear that you almost hear the individual notes. And you feel like how when people sing together. Do you, do you know what I mean? Like there, I'm just sort of clashing things together. But because there's something about it, I don't know how to describe it, but it's like. Like they sound, when they clash, they sound pleasant, I guess is the word I'm going for. Like when you're holding those extended notes. Like they ring through true, which I absolutely love. Uh, and yeah, oh, look, there's the mic positions. It says it right here. Uh, so it's the classic modern and Scott Smith, two S's, the double S. Right, so they also have some other things that I didn't use, and we'll have a quick look at those. So I, again, I'm, uh, the main version is actually a powered by, I'm just using the, uh, you know, the, the quick load version. So we did show the uh, traditional syllables that, uh, we didn't show the traditional articulation. So we'll do that now, we'll load up the women. Right, yeah, so the syllables is the word builder basically, right? That's the ha, chu, fa, mi, no, sun, mi, no, mi, no, sun. And then uh, the traditional articulations are your R's. They are your... Although this one doesn't seem to want to load anything in. Oh no, it's because we're saving. I see evening, lost seven UK, how you doing? Rock the Caspar. Okay, this one's loading in purged, so it's gonna load the notes as I do them. By the way, for those of you who don't know what loading in purge, that means it loads in immediately like it did then. Now it's loading in. I don't know why. But when you load something in purge, what it'll do is it'll load in with nothing loaded, and then it'll only load the keys that you play, right? So if you've written your track and you've run out of data, you can purge all the tracks. And then when you play your track through one time, the only MIDI data, well, the only samples that will be loaded in are ones that have been used. And that's sort of what that did then, but then it started loading, so I guess it was just looking. Right, let's uh, let's put this on, but let's keep it keep it away from all the big stuff. Let's. Just keep it on like the uh, chords and stuff. So this is the R legato. <laughs> I actually played, Jesus. I actually played that so well in time, it just sounded like the actual thing. So this is just the solos. Change that to ooh. Uh, 
Right, so if we put that with everything, but like take out the rest of the choir, listen to how the R's cut through. Like it's actually pretty strong. I don't know what the drums are doing in the background there. They're having a great time though. So with the R's. So you can hear the R cuts through by itself. Again, I'm not sure what that thing's doing. Ums are nice. They're like. Just gonna just gonna mute that track. There we go. Like ums are always really quiet. But we also have the sustains. So these are just like your regular sounds. I'm sure you guys know these. Right? Lovely sustains. Let me put black hole on that. I feel like that's a black hole type sound. Let me change the key. too much actually. Let's try the, the air. You need like a, it's need like a, like a boom. I need, <laughs> why is it always so different? So that's too high. So air is fine. E air. 
So this is more of the actual E sound. So O is mo probably the most common one. staccatos I did try so if you remember that line where I was like da, 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 ba, 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 I did try these up against it but these are more like ha huh? they're more like staccatos than spiccatissimos <laughs> shortatissimos there we go although that goes places right so these are more like oh um let's be quiet on They're more just like if you're trying to hit her. Jesus. If I just put like the drums, is that going to be too loud? <laughs> Sounds weird when you just put like drums since, like when you put the extras together. Bring in the men. God, I've got a big old. I was going to say, I'm so, I swear there was more to it than that. Right, so now let me bring in the traditional articulations for the men, and you'll get an idea of what we're doing. Let's bring in those men. Right here. So they're going to load in, but we will play along while they're going. Ah! They always sound so scared. Ah! I'm not sure where in the song this is. It's chaotic. Let me try it. Let me try it. Do these have portamento legato? Doesn't sound like it. No, it sounds like monophonic to me. These sound pretty quiet, so I'm actually going to play these over this. Everything's really quiet now. Right, 
So this is an octave high. Very quiet, isn't it? All right, so we have, let's put this on, I'm gonna put this on string 11. Cause then like, if I put this on, um, put this on some strings and then I can play these legato ones over it. Oh, it's really soft there. Particularly quiet. Right? Is that quiet for you guys too? DJ. You want me to put OTT on it? Okay. Let's see what secrets are hidden in the OTT. Sounds a little. Seems a little OTT. Sounds a little, little much. But what I could probably do is. All right, so if I put this to a sustained. Mm, and then we can come up to this.
Ah, he got stuck. <laughs> now we play these together. I'm in love with this fucking choir. So that's like the sustains by themselves. Right, let me get rid of the uh, the top bit and we'll just play this. Oh, this is the men. And so that's that's all of the types of uh, sound you can get from chorus. And as you can hear, it worked in my track. It worked both for this soft section and it worked perfectly for this big, big, loud section too. And as you could hear, it has the tone for all of them. And so well, let me let me just pull up onto my main thing. So in conclusion, in conclusion, my biggest takeaway from chorus is it's a step forward. We've moved on to the next level of sampling choirs, in my opinion. This is so the first step forward that I heard was going from uh, going from like our regular choirs to Dominus. So Dominus is up until this point by Fluffy Audio. That was my go to for the soft sounding library. Right. And the reason it, it was my go to and the reason it felt like a step forward is because it had that soft low tone like I was talking about during the video there was. When you play like a drum soft and turn it up, you get the warm, loud, uh, like you you get a, a warm body sound, but it's full. It's a very full and low frequency sound. And you're just turning it up so it feels bigger than it is. Whereas if you hit a drum hard, the actual energy coming off of it is a very fast wave of air now. So you're not, even if you turn it up, all of that body of the instrument's gone because it's not resonating at a slower frequency. Choir and, and like general, like our rib cages and, you know, uh, our vocal cords, they tend to vibrate better like that. When you're doing soft, it's a completely different resonation to when you're singing loud. And so up until this point, if you wanted both in your track, you had to use two different libraries. For the soft, I would use Dominus because they nailed that inner harmony tone where you're playing it soft, so it's full bodied, but you're hearing the individual sort of uh, feeling between the notes. You're hearing the little differences between the, the individual notes in a chord. Whereas when you play loud, which is what I used to use uh, Oceana by Performance Samples, who also made this library, they absolutely nailed that hard, aggressive tone, which focuses on really sh like really tight syllables, really, uh, really aggressive mixing, really pushing those higher end things over the top so that you can uh, you know, really poke through a mix. And so if I was doing hard, I would use Oceano. If I was doing soft, I would use Dominus. Now, Chorus has completely solved that issue by allowing you to have the option of either or either. And it even takes it one step further than Dominus because Dominus works with like a pre-laid tracks, uh, a pre-laid word builder. So it sort of goes between them and it sort of flows between them. But like the offset and the timing of it doesn't always feel correct. And you can't really... Like it's not in Dominus, it's not triggered by every note. It's triggered by legato. So you hold down the chords you want, and then it will play the word builder over it. If you change note, it'll either just keep going from where it was without a break. So if you break mid syllable, it'll just change note mid syllable, and you you had no control. So like you had to set it up first and then play it. The, the thing that chorus allows you to do finally is have those soft 
like warm, like full sounding uh, vocals, but with the control of being able to actually play, you know, actually play the rhythm you want. That's the wrong one. Beach balling. Being able to do that is incredibly powerful, even though it doesn't seem like it. When you're writing music with quiet, you'll, those of you who know will know that is incredibly powerful. But then also on top of that, not only just having your regular, like aggressive vocals, which, there we go, which are these ones. You also get, which, which by the way, works brilliantly when you're doing the big tracks, you know, it cuts through the mix, it's big and full. They also have that extra option, which no one asked for, but I all of a sudden can't live without the extra energetic ones, which are like that extra processed. And it will absolutely cut through a mix. And again, that is much in the way how uh, a lot of brass instruments feel like they finish at an MF. You need something a little extra these days to go into that extra F, that extra quadruple F. You need to do a little extra. That's what the energetic syllables go to uh, do for you. So in my, in my opinion, 100% this is my choir library now. I've already used it in at least six actual video game tracks. Uh, and I've used both. I've used all types. I've used the syllables. I've used the uh, traditional just R's and O's in places, but mostly I'm using that slow syllable. That slow syllable is the new one. That's to me is the most impressive. It's my go-to. The price I think is very fair considering what you've, you're, you're getting. And I also think it's very fair considering the fact that this will probably be a go-to choir library for a while. I can't think of anything else I've seen promoted, which is quite doing it on the level that this one is yet. Like the the thing that I've started hearing rumblings of, but I don't know is if is true, is that some of the older choir libraries are starting to look at the newer ones and figure out ways to like re improve their older samples. I have no idea if that will work or if you you know I don't know what goes into sampling a choir really, so it could be good, could be bad. But if uh, but at the end of the day, the thing that is important is the bar has been raised for choir libraries. In my honest opinion, I think it's worth every penny. It's my go-to. It sounds great and it plays great. That's that's the fun combination because performance samples have always been the most playable instruments on the market. And Audio Imperia have always nailed the tone. So bringing the two together, having playability and tone, I think, it, which is why I'm genuinely saying this is worth whatever they want to charge for it because it will be a go-to for a lot of people. It's because it is just that good. It's one of those rare libraries that comes along and it's it just does what you need it to do without you having to take it further because it's either cutting corners or doesn't quite give you what you need. This covers my choral needs. Uh, the Other than, you know, if we were asking for something like effects or like extended techniques, but for bread and butter libraries, I'm not really that bothered too much. You know, I can buy extra effects libraries for when I need them because that's niche. Choral stuff, which I use bread and butter all the time, this is by far my go-to. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this overview today. Again, it, it's, it was going to be a bit of a shorter, weirder one because it's a choir library, so it's difficult to show and not just be five minutes of me playing the key and then like, that's the gist. But anyway, so I hope you enjoyed uh, looking at the library through a track I wrote. I hope you enjoyed my insights into composition using choir. And I also hope you enjoyed the look at the library itself. If you're watching this on YouTube, this is where the video will end. If you're watching this on Twitch live, stick around. We've still got a few more things to do before we go today. But on YouTube, if uh, if you are on YouTube, make sure to hit the bell, subscribe, like, comment. Make sure you comment, by the way. If there's something in the video you like or dislike, do comment on it, but make sure when you do, you add the time code so I know what you're talking about because these things run long. So if you're on YouTube and you want to comment, make sure you put the time code so I know what you're talking about. Don't just reference it in words because I never know what you're talking about. But other than that, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.